Hi there, I'm Carol Letzinger and I'm here to spend some science time with you. Science at home is always fun to do. Uh, if you can't be at school, you might as well have fun doing it at home. And I thought today we would talk about phases of the moon. When we're doing this program, it's close to Halloween. And on Halloween night, we're going to have a full moon. And it's the second full moon in the month of October. So it's being called a blue moon and people are so excited and yet we can't go trick or treating. It's a bummer. Aww. But we can talk about the phases of the moon anytime because the moon is always there. It's a satellite of Earth and we can look up and if the sky is clear, you can even see it in the daytime sometimes depending on what phase it's in. So I brought some things to talk about and model those phases of the moon today. The first thing is this rock that very closely resembles the lunar surface. And it's a fun rock for me because my husband found it. And when he brought it home, I said, oh my gosh, it looks like the moon. And of course he thought he had a crazy person for a wife. But it worked out really great to take it to school and share it with kids. The other thing that I have are two styrofoam balls on a stick. And one of them has a letter X and the other one is half black and half white. And so as we do this activity, you can do this with an orange. You can do it with your fist. You can do it with a soccer ball. Whatever is nice and round, you can do this activity with. It's a lot of fun. Okay, when we go outside and look during the day, never look at the sun, but you can see the moon. So here's what we're going to use to model our moon. And I'm going to be planet Earth. And you can do this too, you can do this at home. Let's pretend that you are planet Earth. This is your head, this is planet Earth, and you live on your nose. And this is our moon. And as I'm watching you, the lights from the, from the TV studio are shining directly on me. So you can see that this side of me has daytime, and this side of me is having nighttime. And that's what we're modeling here with our styrofoam ball. Nighttime is on this side, daytime is on this side. Now on this side of the moon, it's dark. I can't see it because the light is in my eyes. That's what happens when we can't see the moon during uh, the new moon phase. The, the moon is lost in the glare of the sun. It's close, but not in front of it because if it was in front of it, that would be a solar eclipse but it's not, it's off to the side and lost in the glare. So here's Mrs. Letzinger, daytime, I'm looking, I don't see it, but watch as Earth rotates on its axis. Now here I go, I'm going from west to east and I'm taking it around with me and you'll be able to see those different phases of the moon. So now I'm going to put the dark side towards you and the bright side towards me and watch. Now when, it's, when we're this way and here's the earth and here's me on my nose and we see the whole full moon. And as we go around, we see those other phases. It takes a month or four weeks for the moon to complete one orbit with the Earth. And, and that's what we call a month a month. It's a moon. So every seven days, we've got a, 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 a major change. Last night for us, the moon was a little bit more than, than half. And so Saturday, which will be another seven days, it will be the full moon. And another seven days, it'll be the last quarter. And another seven days, it'll be the new moon. So now I'm using this one with the X because I want you to see something. Here on planet Earth, we never see the dark side of the moon. It's there, but we can't see it because the moon orbits with us. It's trapped. So the stick represents gravity and my arm, gravity, and here's the moon and here's Earth. And as we go around, you'll be able to see the X because you're observing on another planet but I won't. I'll only see one side all the time. Watch.
And here we are back again. We never saw the far side of the moon until astronauts from the United States landed on the moon. They orbited around the moon and they landed on the moon. And 12 human beings from the United States of America walked on the moon. There's people who say they didn't, but yes, they did. Now, when I was out shopping the other day, I found a really cute book about the moon. And it's for little kids, and I know you're a little bit older than that, but it's To the Moon and Back, and it's a really cute book. And uh, it has a, t a telescope in here. This is what we use to look at things that are out in the sky. It makes them look closer, but it doesn't look uh, like it does in the pictures. Uh, it talks about the astronauts going to the moon. It talks about them communicating and talks about craters on the moon. Now, craters on the moon, people used to think were oceans. When they, when they looked at the moon and they saw those dark shadows on the moon, they said, oh, it's oceans. And so they named them Maria. So what we're going to do is create some craters on the moon. And I have some pretend meteorites or asteroids that I picked up outside. And we're not going to use this because it's too big. And I have a, a, a pan with some flour in it like we used to make our tortillas and cookies with. And I have some cocoa mix. Now, when the astronauts went to the moon, they said two things. They said the surface of the moon was kind of like the consistency of flour. And they said it smelled like gunpowder. If you've ever popped a firecracker, you know what gunpowder smells like. Also, they discovered that the edges of the particles on the lunar surface were really sharp and it was cutting into the fabric of their suits that they wore. And when they got back into the capsule to come back to the Earth, all of that bits of moon dust were floating around in their, in their little spacecraft. So going to the moon is not an easy thing. Uh, scientists right now are working very hard because we want to go back to the moon in 2024, which isn't very far from now. And maybe by the time you're in high school, and ready to graduate and go on to college, you can study some courses that let you be an astronaut if that's what you want to do. So I'm going to go over here to the, to the box of pseudo regolith. And I am going to sprinkle some cocoa on it because I want you to see the, the difference in what happens. The surface of the moon is darker than the underneath part. And when you look at pictures of the moon, you can actually see this, uh, these impact craters. So I'm going to drop my first rock from the top of the table into the lunar, ooh, man. Ooh, man. So if we can tighten up on that and see how deep that crater is, and we got a spray of underneath lunar surface, pretend lunar surface out scattered around the pan. So let's try a smaller one and see what happens. So did you see the flower spray out? And it's, it's sprayed out all over here. And if we were outside, we could get some really good scattering. And one more. Whew. Now we really got some. What was the difference? Each one of those rock meteorites was a little different size. That was the biggest one, and so it made the biggest splash and scattered underneath regolith all over the surface. Some of it even went out on the floor. If you look, it's scattered out here on the floor here and here, which makes it a lot of exciting um, ideas to pop into your head about the surface of the moon. A long time ago when people looked at the moon, they liked to imagine they saw things in the moon. And when you look up, you see dark shadows. Uh, they're kind of scattered around like this. And 
so of course, people being people, they like to make things look like things they're familiar with. So instead of seeing this just as a dark patch, the Native Americans who lived in this hemisphere called it a rabbit. And this is where they connected the dots. Here's the rabbit's body, here's the rabbit's head, its ears, and its cottontail back there. Other people looked and saw a lady in the moon, they saw the man in the moon, uh, some people saw an old man in the moon. The library is a good source of reference that you can go to and find out, or go to the internet, everybody goes to the internet now, find some stories about what's on the moon and enjoy that for yourself. There's no limit to what you can do when you start looking up and seeing things. Now, I used flour and cocoa. You could just use mud. You don't need, you don't need to use your mother's cookie, cooking material to, to, to make uh, a science experiment. You can use mud, you could use sand, you could, well, I guess you could use Play-Doh. So experiment, think about what you can do to learn about the sky that you live in, that you live under, and think about some other things that you'd like to learn about. And send us a note here at KBSD, and we'll try to get something together that answers your questions. And thank you so much for tuning in today.